Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Donna and welcome. And if you've watched some of my prior videos, you all know that I enjoy making videos about finding cheaper or more affordable but still luxury handbags to some of my favorite, more expensive luxury bags. So I've done this for a couple of other bags in the past. I've done it for the Hermes Kelly as well as the Chanel Classic Flap. If you're interested, don't forget to check those out. But let's get back to today's video. So in today's video, I decided to kind of use the same premise, but this time I decided to, hey, why not? Let's make this type of video for one of the most famous, most popular, recognizable, worldwide, mother of all handbags, the Hermes Birkin. So I took the Hermes Birkin and I started scouring the internet or using my knowledge about handbags to find very similar or handbags that have that Birkin allure but at a more affordable price because as we all know, for one reason or another, not everyone can justify adding a Birkin handbag to their collection and that's fine. There are plenty of alternatives out there that can do the same thing. So without further ado, let's get started. So many of you are probably already aware of how the Hermes Birkin came to be. But for those of you who aren't, well, in 1983, Hermes's chief executive, Monsieur Jean-Louis Dumas, was seated in a plane beside Jane Birkin, a famous actress. So the two were traveling from London to Paris, or Paris to London anyway. They were in a plane, and Jane was carrying all her belongings in a straw bag in the overhead compartment. And I guess there was some kind of turbulence or whatnot, and her bag spilled over, all her belongings fell onto the deck and she kind of like scurried to pick them up. Later on she was explaining to Monsieur Dumas that she was having the hardest time finding a leather traveling bag basically. And I guess Monsieur Dumas took this as a challenge because that's when he created the Hermes Birkin. And obviously he named it after the famous actress who inspired this idea, Jane Birkin. Now Birkin initially did use the bag to travel and to carry her belongings but later on was heard saying or in an interview whatnot that she stopped using the bag because it held too many objects making it too heavy to carry but nonetheless it still became the world's most famous bag and people all over the world appreciate this bag so as we all know today the Hermes Birkin does come in a variety of different colors and materials you can get it in exotic skins as well uh, different sizes you have the 25 the 30 so on and so forth but to top it all off what makes it really sad for all of us handbag enthusiasts out there is that this bag is getting increasingly harder and harder to purchase new from store and as i've mentioned plenty of times in other videos you cannot just walk into an hermes store and ask to purchase a birkin no instead your essay has to kind of like offer you the bag and they offer you the bag once they feel you've like you've established or proven your loyalty to the brand by purchasing other little items from the, the fashion house. And Hermes is really known for kind of working hard to protect the prestige surrounding owning a Birkin bag. Although I have to admit personally, I do feel that the prestige around this bag has kind of decreased a little bit over the years just because Every celebrity or famous person or person that can afford this bag has not one but many in multiple different colors and sizes and it's just kind of, I don't know, for me it's just kind of lost its prestige. That doesn't mean I don't want one, I still love the bag and really want one in my collection, but it's kind of changed a little bit for me. So we'll leave that debate for another day, but what I was really trying to get to was that I've heard that if Hermes finds out that you've kind of sold your handbag to a, a reseller, they can kind of blacklist you from their boutique or kind of from acquiring other handbags from their fashion house. So that is a very big no-no for them. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've never tried to resell a Hermes Birkin. I'm still at the stage of acquiring one, but anyway, that's what I've heard. So as you probably already know, when it comes to pricing, Hermes bags are really expensive. I mean, they start at 12 to 15,000 depending on the size, color, skin you choose. And they can, well, there is no limit for the, the max price you can pay for this type of bag. The most expensive Birkin was actually sold at an auction house in I think 2017. It sold for a whopping $500,000, which is crazy. But anyway, it just goes to show that there really is no maximum price for a Hermes Birkin. 
Now, we all love and go crazy for the Birkin, but let's just take a minute just to see what actually makes the Birkin a Birkin. What gives off that Birkin allure or vibe? Well, for me, honestly, it is the fact that it has two handles, but not long handles like you would see on a tote. Handles really that you can kind of carry the bag in the crook of your arm. As well, it has that piece of hardware in the center. It has the two straps that can come out. It kind of has a slight trapeze shape. It's not a perfect rectangle or square. And also the sides are usually triangular and larger. So like Jane Birkin's complaint, a lot of stuff does fit in the bag. So as I hope you will be able to see by the end of this video, there are quite a few handbags that do give off that Birkin allure. So you can kind of get the look or the feel, the style, the vibe without necessarily spending tens of thousands of dollars. So bag number one is the Louis Vuitton City Steamer. Now this bag goes for around $4,350 USD. So as you can see, yes, it is an expensive bag, but it's far less expensive than a Birkin. And this bag comes in a variety of colors and a couple of different sizes. I think they do have a mini, a small version, and an MM version as well. And for me, this bag does tick off all the boxes. I mean, you do have that double handle in the perfect length to be able to carry the bag in the crook of your arm or just as a top handle as well. You have that little bit of hardware in the center of the bag. You also do have um, a lock, which is very signature of Louis Vuitton. It is kind of a slight trapeze. I mean, if you do look at the bag, it's not a rectangle or square in the strict sense of the word. And the sides do kind of go larger, so you can fit quite a bit in the bag. What I really do like about this bag though, as I've mentioned, is that they replace the kind of clochette with the, the lock, which kind of gives it a more Louis Vuitton twist to it. It's a perfect bag if you're looking for that Birkin vibe, I guess. So bag number two is the Burberry two-handle title bag. Now this bag does go for $1,990 US dollars, which is literally a fraction of the price for a full leather bag. I believe it's the cheapest bag in the five bags I'm mentioning today. And I don't know why, but this bag, especially in this color, makes me really think of the Birkin in like a size 25 about, in like a gold tone with white stitching. I guess it's because you can kind of wear this color combo with the same types of outfits as the Birkin I mentioned. And once again, this bag, you can carry it in the crook of your arm. It does have the double handle. It is trapeze in shape. The sides are kind of wide. And what I love about this one that the Louis Vuitton one did not have, it kind of has those double straps at the front. On the Birkin, they allow you to close the bag. On this bag, it's more of a decorative purpose, but still it does give it that allure, that vibe as well. So now, bag number three. For me, that bag was the Saint Laurent Sac de Jour. And I feel like this is a bit of an obvious choice just because it is such a popular bag on its own and it has also been compared to a Birkin in the past. And from afar, especially if you, if you cover or wrap the handles in Twillies, it does look like a Birkin. It can kind of get mistaken for a Birkin if you look at it quick, quick. This bag does have it all right up to the clochette. So you know it doesn't have that little bit of hardware in the center. It does say Saint Laurent instead, which is perfectly fine, but it does still have the little straps as decorative purposes in this case as well. The shape is almost identical to a Birkin. The sides are almost the same width. So really for me, this bag does scream Hermes Birkin when I do look at it or carry it around. However, there is one main difference between a Birkin and the Sac de Jour, and it's their price tag. So if you're looking for a more affordable alternative, the Sac de Jour is the way to go. So bag number four, we're almost at the end of our list, guys. Bag number four is another Saint Laurent bag. It's the Saint Laurent Manhattan. And if you know anything about me by now, it's that I'm a huge fan of Saint Laurent handbags. So really, it's no surprise that I included two in a list of five in this video. Now, this bag does go for $2,150, so it is a lot less expensive than like an entry-level Birkin bag, if you ask me. But if you look at it, it almost looks identical to one. So if the Sac de Jour did not really remind you of a Birkin, this one certainly will. I'm 100% positive. And I mean, look at this bag, do I really need to use words to explain why it looks like a Birkin? These bags are just so similar, right up to the metal hardware and the straps used to keep the bag closed. I think you can kind of see from looking at this bag what I'm talking about when I say 
It looks very similar to the Birkin, so let's get on to the next bag in that case. So bag number five, guys, the last bag, and this bag I feel is very special for me personally. It's the Salvatore Ferragamo Studio Bag in the size S or small. And I only just discovered this bag not too long ago, and I'm really, really seriously considering adding it to my collection. And yes, like I've mentioned before, this bag is very similar to a Birkin. It has the double handles, the hardware in the center, the trapeze shape. You know the drill by now, the wide triangular sides. However, there's one main difference that sets this bag apart from the other four. The other bags in this video, although they were very similar to the Birkin, they were kind of tote bags. So there was no kind of flap or closure at the top. The bags were kind of like open. You can just put your hand in the bag and grab whatever you need. Whereas this bag kind of has a flap and we all know the Birkins do have flaps and you use the, the two straps to the side to kind of hold the flap in place and keep the bag closed. So for me personally, this bag kind of brought the whole Birkin alternative game to a whole new level and it is definitely the winner in this video for me. So that's all for today guys. I hope you enjoyed my video. Did you agree with my choices? Let me know in the, in the comment section below which one was the ultimate Birkin alternative for you. And if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you can catch other similar videos to this one, and don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I guess I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye guys!